So problem of the day from Friday said a ball is launched straight upwards with an initial velocity of 12 meters per second. And we want to know how high up it's going to go. Um, so this one's a little tricky because it might for a second seem like we don't have enough givens to solve it. Um, but if we think it through, uh, we will be able to. Um, so let's see, what givens do we have? There's a couple of them that aren't too hard to figure out anyway. We have the initial velocity. Yeah, what's the initial velocity going to be? 12 um, plus seconds. Mm -hmm. 12, yeah, right. 12 meters per second, right? That's its initial velocity, and that's going to be positive because it's going to be moving upwards, right? So we don't have to make it negative like we've done in the past if it's falling down. So um, is it be free fall, Mr. Sensei? Absolutely, it is, Isabella. Yeah, so what does that give us? Uh, nine point something. I don't remember. Yeah, nine point something is what? Is the. Um, wait. Velocity? No, it's not the velocity. Wait, say it again. Velocity? No, it's not the not velocity. velocity. Right? I think you had it the first time. What did you say the first time? You guys know this. Something's got to be 9.8 when it's in free fall. Gra gravity? Yeah, well, it has to do with gravity. Gravity causes this quantity to be 9.8 when we're on Earth. You guys know this, it's not an initial or final velocity, it's not time or displacement. What's the only other quantity we have in kinematics here? Acceleration. Yeah, acceleration, there we go. So oh, it's okay. in free fall, so we know the A, uh, well, AY in this case, because it's vertical, is uh, nine point, who remembers? I know Angel said nine point something, but what is it? Nine point eight, I don't know. Yeah, yeah nine point eight, that's right meters per second squared good okay so we got the the only number that we see 12 meters per second is our initial velocity we know it's in free fall so we've got acceleration now here's the tricky one there is one more given right it asks us how high up the ball goes and that kind of implies something how does any does anybody get it does anybody know what the third given is here Isn't it what you're finding? So like how high does it go? Well, that's the unknown, right? And we are going to need that. Which quantity is that? That's the unknown. The how high? Hmm. I think it's going to be displacement. Yeah, exactly. It is displacement, right? How high is like how far? So it's delta x or delta y in this case, since we're talking about vertical. So that's our unknown. We're not going to be able to solve this unless we have three givens. So uh, I'm gonna, go ahead. Sorry. Do we have the, the final velocity too? Yeah, I think we do have the final velocity. What what did the final velocity have to be? Um, I think it's gonna be zero or the same. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, maybe it's zero. Maybe it's twelve. Well, if we're talking about how high up it goes, right? If I throw a ball straight upwards. When it gets to the very top of where it's going, when it gets to its highest point, how fast is it moving? Zero. Zero, right? Because it stops briefly and then comes back down, right? So we know it's at its highest point when it comes to a stop, right? So we know it at the highest point when the velocity is zero, when the final velocity is zero. So that's our last given. I know that one was a, is, a, is kind of a tricky one to figure out. Um, but hopefully it makes sense and, and ask if it doesn't. But if you think about it, something, you throw it up in the air, it gets to its highest point. At that very highest point, that's when it comes to a stop before it starts falling back down. So its velocity has to be zero. Um, questions about that one? I don't want to move on if, there's a, if, there's a, if that's confusing or if you're not sure about that. Okay. Well, once we get that, then it's not, too, uh, it's not too tricky from this point, right? We've got our three givens, the initial velocity, the final velocity, and the acceleration, and we're looking for the displacement. Um, so which of the big four equations would we want to use to do that? Let's look, we've got a VI, an A, a VF, and a delta one. Um, one yeah it looks like the last one right because only in the, the last one doesn't have a time and we don't have time in any of our givens or unknowns 
So our final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times our displacement. All right. Um, well, one thing I want to make sure I fix uh, the acceleration, make sure we put negative 9.8, right? Because it's being pulled downwards. Acceleration is always going to be in the downwards direction. Didn't mention that before. Okay, so we have to do some rearranging here, right? We've got to get the delta y all by itself on one side. Um, so we can do that in a couple of steps, right? So this term of the equation, the 2 times acceleration times delta y, we want to get that by itself first. So how can I do that? How can I get rid of this piece, the VYI squared? Hmm. Dividing it? Well, so the VYI is being added on, right? So oh, I don't yeah. want to divide it. Subtract it? Subtract it, right? You're going to undo the... Um, undo the addition by subtracting it, right? So if I do minus VYI squared on this side, it goes away, and I have to do it on this side as well. So final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared equals two times acceleration times displacement. And then from here, I think you can see there's only one more step, right? If we want to get this delta Y by itself, uh, what do we need to do? Divide. Yeah, divide, right? And what, what is it that we need to divide? You have to divide the two as well, right? Yeah. The two and the, um, what did I say? The displacement. Uh, almost, not the displacement, right? That's what we want to leave there by itself. That's our unknown. So we want to divide the acceleration out, right? To leave yeah. the displacement where it is. Bless you. Bless you. So if we divide uh, both sides by two times a y, the two and the a y cancel out on that side. Of course, we have to do it to this side as well. Um, and then if I rewrite the equation, uh, I see displacements just final squared minus initial squared over two times acceleration. Okay, now I can go ahead and plug in my numbers. My final velocity was zero, so zero squared is still zero, uh, minus my initial velocity squared, so that's 12 meters per second, and I'll have to square that. Uh, then divided by two times negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So, let's see, I have uh, zero minus, and then I have 12 squared. And then I want to divide that by 2 times negative 9.8. And I get 7.346, so I'll round that to 7.35. And if I look at units, I've got meters per second squared. So that's meters squared over second squared divided by meters over a second squared, so I'm just left with a single meters. And that's a displacement, so that's what I was hoping to get. And seven meters, if you throw something up in the air, seven meters seems like a reasonable height for it to go, so it seems like we've done everything okay here so far. Um, questions on this one? I know this was a trickier one than most of them, and mostly because of this, this third given. Um, I think not a lot of people figured this one out. But that's okay. Um, if anybody has any questions, please go ahead and ask them. <laughs>